After 40 years of horror in black and white, we come to the year 1960, and Peeping Tom, a film characterised by its vibrant colour scheme and taboo subject matter. At the time, Peeping Tom's tale of a tormented young man and his insatiable desire for murder was described as evil, beastly, depressing, nauseating, and pornographic. It has since undergone a major critical reappraisal, and for my money, it is one of the most gorgeous horror films out there. Peeping Tom is actually Peeping Mark, a serial killer who is terrorising the young, sexually alluring women of London. He's like an awkward mix of Michael Caine and Peter Lorre, with the voice of Kiff. His favourite hobby, aside from murder that is, is video photography. Indeed, he works as a focus puller on movie sets, but even in his spare time, he never leaves home without his camera. You never know. The urge to film or to kill could strike at any moment, and Mark needs to be prepared. You see, Mark's hobbies are not mutually exclusive. Not only does he prey on unsuspecting women, he likes to immortalise their final moments on video, capturing the very essence of total terror, as he penetrates them with a blade hidden within the tripod. The film follows Mark as he succumbs to his uncontrollable nature, while attempting to subdue it as the nice lady from downstairs takes a romantic interest in him. Powell and Pressburger were one of Britain's greatest directing assets in the 1940s. Together, they directed some of the most famous and well-regarded films of the era. A Canterbury Tale, The Life and Death of Colonel Blue, Black Narcissus, and A Matter of Life and Death, to name but a few. Peeping Tom was one of Michael Powell's first solo efforts after disbanding his winning streak partnership with Pressburger. What he created was yet another work of art, though notably more taboo than the aforementioned dramas. Peeping Tom deals openly with sex, lust, and death. Which magazine sells the most copies? Those with girls on the front covers and no front covers on the girls. Exactly. Dodgy old fellas are seen perusing backdoor catalogues of nudie ladies. The scene's chock full of tongue-in-cheek dirty humour. Well, he won't be doing the crossword tonight. Mark moonlights as a photographer for such pornography, and can't help but murder those he feels a sexual attraction towards. On the surface, it sounds like a fall from grace, in comparison to Powell's classy backlog. But the film is exquisitely stylized and more influential than it was first given credit for. It also signals the horror genre to come, and indeed, society to come. The 60s saw great changes in attitudes towards sexual openness, freedom. It's not presented entirely helpfully here, but the emerging signs are all there. Film lovers are always trying to chart the history of the slasher genre, and in particular, searching for the subgenre's origins. A strong argument can be made for Peeping Tom as a key piece of the slasher puzzle. Its opening scene, shot in first-person POV, tracking the setup and delivery of a violent murder, is of course a trend that many of the latest slasher classics would buy into. Black Christmas, Halloween, Friday the 13th, they all owe a debt. The symbolism of murder via movie camera does not go unnoticed. The theme of voyeurism lays heavy over the entire picture. The opening shot of the eye, Mark films his victims and becomes enthralled with viewing the pervasive footage. The fictional film sets relationship with its actresses. The sleazy underworld of indie porn. But of course, beyond the screen, the viewers become the voyeurs, sharing Mark's creeping POV. Noted feminist critic Laura Mulvey commended the film for its accurate and honest depiction of cinema's male gaze, and the often invasive nature of directing and filmmaking in general. Martin Scorsese agrees, and lists the film as a big influence along with Powell's previous work. But as I stated in the introduction, Peeping Tom was not always so well regarded. Any commentary on art, filmmaking or voyeurism was ignored, and the film was taken at watered down face value, a movie that would then apparently take delight in bare skin, 
and disturbing psychopaths. Michael Powell's reputation was unfairly torn apart overnight. The release in America was minimal, with many relying on edited black and white cuts as the only option to see the film. Showing Peeping Tom without colour is more criminal and offensive than anything shown in the actual bloody film. It's unfortunate that it took so long for the film to gather the respect it deserves, but better late than never, eh? In terms of the mainstream, it still flies under the radar. That could be due to the fact that there was another more famous proto-slasher released in 1960, but also featured a young, oddly charming man-child that likes to drink milk, suffers intense mental health issues stemming from years of parental abuse, and who murders women when his sexual repression is triggered. Both movies deserve to stand side by side in the Holler Hall of Fame.